Somebody wash their hands and see if it doesn't work. August 11th, 7 p.m., Village of Minerva Park Council meeting. And let's do roll call. Councilperson Tresla. Yes, present. Councilperson McNamara. Present. Councilperson Cameron. Present. Councilperson Brueger. Present. Council President Wolf. Here. And um, Councilperson Koss is excused. Uh, just real quick, speaking of roll call, I do want to apologize. I didn't get everyone who was here earlier for missing our work session on Saturday. Just uh, the start of the school year, slipped my mind, and totally missed it. <laughs> no, no good excuse other than that. Hey, honesty is the best policy. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to meeting minutes. We have July 28th council meeting. Minutes? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Anybody opposed? Okay, let's go to August 6th work, work session minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? And I abstain since I wasn't here for him. Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to recommend a new member to plan. Actually, let's start with this. We have a new member coming on to planning and zoning as well as um, changing a non voting member to a voting member on planning and zoning. So, the first, let's start with. Terry O'Connor um, is currently a non-voting member, and I would like to, um, I'm going to use the word promote her to a voting member, um, and that is after our discussion with planning and zoning. So, do you want to make a motion? Do you want me to make the motion? Or, or just appoint, say, you know, I'm, I am appointing this person, I believe we vote on that appointment. Okay. Let's start this. Yeah. Do we have the other one going? The other one is going, Sorry, it's just the uh, first few names of roll call, but again, okay. also the... I'd like to make a motion to Point. appoint Terry O'Connor um, to a voting position on planning and zoning effective at the next meeting, which would be September 3rd. Planning and zoning August 17th, I believe. I think that was canceled. Ah, uh, September 7th. September 7th. It's the first Wednesday. This September 7th. just name it effective. There you go. Effective immediately. There we go. That way Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Next, we're going to move to recommend a, I would like to move to recommend Tommy's, appoint Tommy Sasby as a new member to planning and zoning as a non-voting member. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. And on the side note, I really like that we have that bench of non-voting members. Uh, sitting there so when someone decides that they're done we have people to pull up that are then pass some knowledge about right. it and know, know the procedures exactly really good. yeah it's been going it's been going really well so okay let's go to village official reports let's start with police chief matt Dell. um i have nothing to add to the report i submitted uh, but if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer those now Does anybody have any questions for Chief at this time? Put it on old business, new business if you think of it. Um, the fiscal team actually did not have a report or didn't really have anything to report at this time. Um, so I just advise them that, you know, this was probably going to be a long meeting since we have Mike and everybody here. Um, I did talk to him about the next finance meeting. Um, he said mid-October would actually work great for the next one to go over budget and all of that. If you wanted to put together some dates and email it to him, unless you have something pressing, 
Email them sooner dates. I think mid October is a little late. That's up to you. So I'll, I'll email him. Yes. So email him for um, yeah. upcoming dates and times that you would like to put together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because if, we, if we're working on budget mid October, we've got to start readings in November. The first reading is planned to be the first of November, the second meeting, and then the third is the December meeting. Yes. So, yes. so that doesn't give us very much time to go, go back. back and forth. Perfect. Um, so yeah, just email him a couple dates and times. Um, and honestly, he said he was pretty flexible dates of the week at times. So, um, and now we have a special guest here, Mr. Mike Flickinger, <laughs> our engineer. Um, do you have anything you actually want to report about, or are you? Do you just kind of want to hang out? I know you sent me today the flow line information um, that I want to go over with the streets committee. Um, I also know we have the Jordan Road. Um, meeting scheduled for next week if you want to just give a little update on both of those two things and then if you want to anything on the lakes or if you want to wait till we if, if they have questions for that however you want to okay yeah i just have a, a hopefully brief report uh just on task order number 14 which is the westerville city school district uh work that we're doing we provided some miscellaneous inspection services throughout the month and then um, with the village planning director we're coordinating with the design professional in the school district on some uh, drainage concerns over there. And uh, we actually have a meeting tomorrow morning uh, to continue that conversation. Task order number 18, which is the uh, 2021 storm sewer improvements project or um, <clears throat> the East Shore Core project. We did prepare the punch list for the contractor to address. Um, there's been a bit of a delay because one of the items they need to address is a Precast storm structure top that they or, uh, delivery guy drove over and cracked. Uh, there's been a delay in fabricating it, but uh, they're now scheduled to be able to pick it up next Tuesday, and they anticipate being back on site next Wednesday, which is the 17th. Um, I asked them if they could free someone up from a local project to maybe a, at a minimum before then, if they could just come get that pile of trash, which I think that's probably what's driving some of the comments that you have received it's just looks i mean i agree it looks a little unsightly and we we're trying to help them out and not make them make multiple trips here but this delay has gone on a little longer than we all expected so um after the after they do the work next wednesday we'll we'll inspect it and we'll finalize everything we'll prepare a final change order to reconcile the quantities and then uh, finalize the uh, agreement amount uh, real quick, Mike, this might seem obvious, but I just want to hear it out loud. They ran over and broke it. It's not on us. It's on them to beat that waste. Correct. That yep. would be very, very angry if it wasn't that way. So they were, really and they were very upfront about it. Like as soon as they drove over it, they, I had an email message. I had an email message before I even knew it happened. Gotcha. Them saying, we did this, our bad, it, we'll, we'll make it right. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Uh, task order number 19, which is to start general engineering services. I just, I did want to give everybody an update that we, I met with Infotech on uh, July 15th to, for a demonstration of their Bid Express software, which is electronic bidding and solicitation software. I uh, had a follow-up meeting with the mayor and legal counsel to summarize the demonstration and talk about how it can apply to the village. And um, I think both legal counsel and I highly recommend this software for the village's use going forward. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very user-friendly software. Um, almost every municipality in central Ohio is using it now um, in some form. And one of the benefits to it is that it doesn't have to just be for construction. It can be for any type of solicitation. So if you have to solicit for a new cruiser or a new you know, PPE or stuff like that, you can actually do it through that system. So it's not just for construction. It's, it's I mean, a lot, of, a lot of municipalities use it for just general purchasing. Um, so I'm, I'm in the process of the, uh, the onboarding, as they like to call it, uh, getting set up. They've already set up some dummy templates for the village that I'm going to review. And um, there's, a, there's a pretty good possibility that, you know, for a, an upcoming project, maybe by the end of this calendar year, the first one in 2023, we'd be able to use this software. Uh, then the last one I had on my 
report is task order number 20, which is the 2022 storm sewer improvements project. Uh, probably should rename it the 2023 storm sewer improvements project at this point, but uh, this is the project that's on the, in the Jordan Road area. So uh, Randall Berkeley of our office and I, we met with uh, council person costs on July 19th. We walked the project site for, I mean, it was a couple hours actually, we walked the project site, discussed the alternatives, um, came to some conclusions about the direction that we recommend the village go. Uh, based on that information, we started preparing some alignments, some pot potential alignments uh, in the backyards of the Jordan Road properties. Um, we have the alignments developed to a point that we actually have a, a public meeting, or a, I don't know if that's a technical term. We have a meeting with residents uh, scheduled for next Wednesday. I think it is at six o'clock to just give an overview of the project and the proposed alignments um, so that residents can see how each alignment could potentially affect their property. And uh, we've been working with the mayor and council person costs and legal counsel so that he's aware of the easements that we'll probably need the fact that we may have to have individual conversations with park property owners because each property will have some unique features of maybe tying into their property or eliminating trees and things like that. So we want to have a general meeting next week just to give everybody an update and then work with each property owner specifically uh, going forward so that any betterments or improvements or coordination can be incorporated into the, the bid document. So um, I think there were some, the, the East Shore Court project went on long enough that there were a number of parties who changed throughout the design. Uh, you know, I mean, I think there's one property owner that, the property owner that's there is the third property owner through the duration of the project. And, um, so there was some, there was, I mean, I think it's fair to say there were just some miscommunications with the residents. and and at least reminding people what we had discussed previously or updating them on what we might have changed. So we're trying to be a lot more proactive on this one, use that one sort of as a lesson learned and, and um, be more, uh, yeah, I guess proactive is the right word with these residents. Um, the last item then is um, task order number 22, which is the uh, 2022 CCTV program as you recall, we, we received bids from Flowline in April, uh, but the, the prices were higher than what we originally recommended be budgeted. Um, we've had a lot of back and forth with them, trying to identify why their prices are where they are. I mean, a lot of it is just what everybody is seeing throughout the construction industry. I mean, one of the unfortunate things is pretty much their equipment runs off diesel trucks that are running the entire time they're there. So, you know, as soon as diesel prices started increasing, then, you know, their prices had to go accordingly. Um, I delivered via email a, a recommendation memo to the mayor earlier today uh, with my recommendations for what we should do with, that, with those projects. So, uh, I guess that's it. If, if, if anybody has any questions regarding the uh, lake planning proposal, I, I, I can either address them now if you have questions or if it's better to handle it during the discussion during the legislation phase. That's whatever works best for you guys. Does anybody want to ask any questions about that? Does anybody have any questions about the lake? Does anybody want to ask later? <coughs> well, at this point, session? we're just at the report. Well, oh, no, I was just going to say the, what's the cost? 75, that is the 75 study. Yes. Gotcha. And, and all there is to say about that is we need to study and figure out what needs to be done before we can do anything. Yep. Okay. All right. I don't have any questions. Hey, the, um, you mentioned task 14, the drainage concerns. Is that with the, the elementary school that just opened? So what you're talking yes. about? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take 10 seconds to piggyback off of his. Um, I don't know if he said this, and you might have said it, and I apologize if you did, or if you did. Um, Bid Express is actually free to the village. I don't know if he mentioned that. It's actually the bidders that pay um, when they submit a bid. So just as an FYI, that was one of the big things that um, I don't know that that won't change or there couldn't be something assessed to it, um, but ultimately that's the main thing as far as that goes. Um, the East Shore Court, um, we've obviously had quite a few rains since we've done this project. 
I've had several residents in that particular area reach out to me thanking us for getting this done. So I would like to thank everybody here for doing that as well as you know even past council. Um, it seems to have actually done what it was supposed to do. Um, so just so you guys are aware of that, the grass is growing pretty well. There were some bare spots, but we'll work on getting some of those filled in as well. Um, and then this is in regards to the August 17th at 6 p.m. Um, we just are requesting that if anybody wants to come to that meeting, it's great. It is being, you know, it's on Facebook. Um, but we would like to make sure that the residents that are in that particular area are first and foremost the ones that are allowed access to the building that particular day because obviously there's limited. I don't anticipate there being that many people. Um, but whether or not we have to turn that into a meeting, um, at this point we weren't necessarily going to have an actual public meeting for it as council, um, but we may need to do that only because, and now I don't want to go too far into this, maybe we'll do this during old business. Um, we have several things in streets that I can't do anything until we meet, and one is going to be the leaf bid, which is coming up that we'll discuss. So um, we might turn that into an earlier or a later meeting. We'll get into that in a little bit. And we have reached out to Ben also for the lake, um, all of the information for the lake bid. So Ben is our grant writer that we've used several times. So we will be working with him as well. Um, and that's all I have for that. Just to kind of, again, piggyback off of his thing. We've just a, since you brought it up, Bid Express, so the expenses on the bidder, do we know how much that is? And are we sure that's not an impediment? We've had a hard enough time getting people to bid on things. So I hate for that to yeah. be. The easy answer is um, it's typically not any more than an overnight. So okay. when people have to overnight a bid or drive it in at $4 a gallon, it's probably better. Yes, he already did go through that, and that was one of the sales tips that they gave him. Um, you know, and it, one of the, we had, we've actually already talked about what if somebody really does just want to hand deliver it. Is that going to be an option? Is it not going to be an option? The whole point of doing this bid express is to have something not happen like we've had in the right. past. No. So it no, still no, may no be worth it. Yes. No. So, yeah. so there's that. I mean, we're still working through some of the logistics of it, but... Um, everything that we heard was it will solve our problems in this day and age. I think everybody would prefer it to be electronic and making people drive it in or go to the post office and overnight it is probably more and you know more work on them than it would be just to submit it online. Mm -hmm. cool. Yes. So cool, nice. again, that's all stuff that we'll talk about later um, once we get to that point. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions for Mike about anything or everything? Okay. If you think of something old business, new business, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse is also not here. I knew Jesse was not going to be able to attend tonight. He will be at the next meeting. Um, Eric Fisher, Village Planning. Thank you, Mayor and the Council. Um, sent you all an email a little earlier. That's for your uh, digestion for the coming week, dealing with uh, some discussion on alternates as prepared by the architect to kind of explain those. Um, alternates are added to the bid, and there are um, separate of the base bid and they're there to either take away or add to the overall cost. Uh, there is some, there's some questions to how many of those you can accept beyond the base bid of 10% and the attorney will have, the construction attorney will be, make a ruling on that to send around by next week. Because what we have to do is if you are going to accept any alternates, we have to make sure that those are specified in, in the third reading by that point. So that's why next week will be a good point which you have time to review and can have a nice full discussion the uh, meeting on next Thursday, uh, and then uh, background on the um, contractor who submitted Weaver. Uh, they have a nice website which kind of, you know, you go there and see uh, all the references they have, and then all the individual products are laid out nicely and you can see everything they've done. Okay, so, okay. Um, I don't see pricing on here for the alternates for them to consider as well. The pricing is actually are attached as part of the, um, part of the bid and it's the appendix to the um, or the exhibit to the ordinance itself. So it's already in the it's already in the packet. Because you guys yes you do. This one it's that right. one sheet. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah it should already be on that sheet. Yeah that was a that's all lined up. That's just a description to help everyone out Perfect. know what each one is. And, Perfect. and again we'll talk about them next week in more detail, but those were added in because they're they are good things to have in general uh, from anything from the sign which you know to where that as well as some of the other items out there, but things can be done later. Some things can't be done later, such as the light call system. That's a that's a thing you got to do when the concrete goes down. So, uh, but just review those, and we'll talk about them in depth next week when everybody wants to do. That's all I have. I'll take any questions. Okay. 
Does anybody have any questions? It doesn't look like those numbers are in the books. Yeah. They are. It's in the it's, it's, it's a landscape. It looks yep. like this. Keep going. This. There it is. Yeah, so are they each individual? Correct. Yeah, so you have yeah. the first column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it now. I got it now. And then, hey, do you want these extras? And the, and the one only one I know I want is the uh, metal deduct. roof that saves us 55 grand. Well, metal roof yeah. is a deduct. So that means yeah. you're getting asphalt. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 the, no, but, the, but the, we'll discuss next week. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it's an asphalt okay. roof as opposed to the metal. And you'll have to replace that. You'll have to replace yeah. it. Yeah. One yeah. replaces yeah. in 10 years and the other See, one. See, I thought it was only the other way we were replacing right. shingles with a, a metal roof and saving money. And I'm like, well, that seems like an easy alternate. No, no, no. Other way around. Other way around. Okay. Yeah. Now, but we'll have all discussions next week. Yeah. There'll that be lots of discussions next week because at this time, we don't know. Uh, I'm just going to say, this, we don't know what options we would even be able to add as far as that's what he's trying to get a ruling from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we'll, we'll, so there's adding much less, too much over the base. Correct. If, if, if that's, yeah. you know, the, the, the attorney will, will speak to that. Yeah. So we'll be fine. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So start looking at them, see what you like, see what you don't like, and then we will. Again, some may not be an option, and they all might be an option. Sure. Um, what we could potentially do, and then we'll move on from this, and this is going to be up to you guys. And again, uh, you guys know I do too much of this. If you have interest in staying um, after the August 18th meeting, you know, ending that particular meeting, and I don't want to call it a work session, but going in and going over these, or just doing it during the meeting, that's going to be up to you guys how you want to handle that. If you, uh, however. If you guys want to just do it in old business, new business, or yeah. something like that, it's going to be up to you guys. Yeah, we would have to post another. That's what I'm saying. If yeah, you, so I, you can just have it. You have the discussion during legislation. Just do it. Yeah. You want to do it. Perfect. That's, that's the right time. Okay. Yep. And then planning and or I'm sorry, zoning officer. Um, the report is in there. If anybody has any questions, again, feel free to email him. Um, any comments, questions, or concerns? Oh, sorry. So we're saying no, no question. Okay. Okay. Next, we have planning and zoning. Council President Wolf. Uh, planning and zoning. I actually was unavailable for the last planning and zoning meeting as I was out of town for my my day job. Yeah. So I'll defer to Eric for any update from that. Thanks, sir. It was we simply talked about uh, two items in detail. One concerning fences, uh, uniformity in, in the village as a whole. Uh, and trying to get the details down as far as code's concerned. And the other item was pools, specifically temporary pools, and how to handle those uh, going forward. So there will be more discussions and eventually a recommendation to legislation at some point with all the code. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I remember doing temporary pool discussions before. Is this about fencing and whatnot? Is it big Correct. That's part of it, and, and how some other municipalities have chosen to handle it, and how we'll, you know, since we're in the middle of a large rewrite, these are smaller details but important discussion mm -hmm. points. So we spent a meeting on those two items. Is there a little more meat on them? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. MPCA. Um, their last meeting was last night. Um, they are talking about a lot of their upcoming uh, events, and I'll get into that. We were revising. Um, we were talking about, again, the swag. We've been talking with legal. We've been talking with our fiscal officer about how that, you know, how does the village accept money, this, this, and that. Um, so we're just, I know that Jesse replied today with some stuff. So they're just seeing if it's something that they want to do moving forward. Um, so I don't have any updates, but I will by the next time we do another report. August 13th, the movie night. Um, it's a silent movie, uh, Charlie Chaplin movie. Uh, Saturday 17th, um, Northland Community Festival. You know, we want to support Elevate Northland. They're really big in our village, so, you know, we can you know, support them even better. September 18th, the block party garage sales are September 24th and 25th. Um, OSU tailgating party. Um, details are to come on that. They're just trying to figure stuff out. Aside from that, they're really trying to ramp up and decide how they're pushing their memberships best way to do those drives um, and revising some of their events that they have now you know a lot of things have went up in price so they're, they're looking at their details of you know is do we need to raise the price on this thing so again a lot of time for revisions for everybody um, so I'm sure they'll keep us updated on all that awesome does anybody have any questions and movie night is actually we got a hand here. down there 
Oh. Did you say that that was the community garage sales? Yeah. What date was that? September 24th and 25th. So it was two days? Yes. Okay. They just They've changed it um, because we don't do one in the spring now, I believe. This that's was part that, of that's what I was the last one wasn't too good. Let me look. Let me look yes. on their website just I to thought, clarify it. I thought last year might have been two days. That was I the thought first time. I stood out a little bit. I can never remember being two days. Yeah, maybe not. This might be the first one that they've Have fun with the parking. I can't imagine the, the nightmare of that. I've probably been one of the people being like, I'm only going to be here for five minutes. That's I, already what see, I already see what I want. Every I just want to get that. Well, we Every put signs up before. Yes. We'll, yeah. we'll do that. Yeah, the no parking on yeah. this side. Then, it doesn't. But if someone says I'm only going to be here for five minutes, I, I just want that rug. I can see it. Right here in front of oh. the driveway that's not having a sale so that they can go across the street. Yeah. <laughs> Did you mention the block party? Yeah. Okay. September 18th. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Let me just, yeah, September 24th. And September twenty fifth, nine to three. So it is two days. Shut up. And the block party. Um, just have them reach out to me if we're shutting down streets or roads or any of that stuff. They actually were talking about that. Um, actually, have them reach out to Chief. No I'm kidding. I'll do. They were talking about that, and then also for the children's Halloween party, um, they're going to be reaching out to you just to shut it down for the parade. Yes, which is what we did the last time. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what we did last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, We'll reach out to Blended once we get those dates and times and all that for the stuff. So, okay, we're good. Um, straight back to you. Uh, the email alerts that went out, they're starting, you know, we got a lot of our templates done, so we saved quite a bit of money with that, which is always a, a high five. Um, so that's going well. Um, we're just going to kind of ramp that up as much as possible. We're doing weekend recaps. What happened in the village this last weekend or, you know, the month ahead? Uh, we want to spotlight certain residents. We want to, we, we just want to utilize that to the most we can. Um, I know that we just did something with Police with Pancakes with our wonderful Monroe Park Police. Thank you so much, Chief Del, for that. And thank you for everybody that was involved. Um, Sahara Columbus donated so many backpacks and, and sack lunches and it was, amazing to see the kids here and interacting with our officers in your nice little hat and all it was <laughs> it was awesome it's really cool and the, you know there was a couple people from Minerva France the head of the PTA and came over and she's like I just love this so it's it's appreciated and it's really it's appreciated um, chatting with council the next date we've decided on is September 29th um, I asked uh, my fellow council members what they would like to see as topics. Um, I am going to ask residents as well. However, I've not gotten a lot of feedback from the, from the resident aspect. Um, it was recommended that we kind of focus on some of the capital projects, you know, how we plan to, you know, spend this tip money, uh, buildings, lakes, you know, perhaps the garage, and then also touch on the amphitheater. We have a lot of things happening in the amphitheater right now. So just like a 10 to 15 minute review and then allow those residents to have that open Q&A like they did last time. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, social media wise, I, I really want to find a way to, when we pass a new ordinance, or I know I didn't say that right, or something changes in the code or something like that, finding a way to not just say, hey, refer to the website, making sure that we, we put that up on the village website so something has changed. You know what I mean? A lot of people just ain't looking through. You know, Just another way to keep our residents informed as well. Survey, um, I did email. Eric, this afternoon to get that, um, I, I agree we should add a few things into that um, and get started on that. That way we can get a basis of where our residents feel and a plethora of topics. So I'm all for that. Um, and if anybody has anything to add or revise that or if they need another copy of that last survey, please let me know and I will get that to you. That is all. Okay, that was a lot. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> We're all tired. Okay. Um, are we having the September 20... I feel like I've got questions for everything. Just, are we having the September 29th? I do the three or four. Are we confirmed at Minerva France yet? Do you need us to... No, you Barb is supposed to be reaching out to them. Because we are already confirmed. I'll, I'm going to announce this again in a minute. Um, all of our meetings and work sessions are going to be held at Minerva France starting... Mm -hmm probably mid-September. 
Awesome. Yeah. So, so just so you um, I totally, I'm going to blow, yeah, I'm just going to bash myself on here. Totally forgot about planning and zoning. So now I have to reach out and see if those dates are available we'll as well. We'll just add that one. Is there exactly. a reason we're moving from here? Or um, unless you want to be in a construction zone. Okay. So As we're hoping we, we, we're hoping we won't be able to do this, huh? Um, we'll say that again. We're hoping we won't be able to do this, huh? We yeah. hope we won't be able to be here. Right. We're hoping that we won't be here, but again, you know, all of that can change as well. But okay. we are, regardless, we're pre-planning. Um, we're gotcha. pre-planning to... We're planning for this to be... To be... Heavy, heavy correct. And not so, um, well, we can't just make the decisions the day before. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we're trying There's to be a little... To, we need a little plan. Is charging us anything to use no. their not that I'm Not that I'm aware of at this point in time that has not been brought to anybody's attention. So and, I'm going to go with no. And... Fun fact that I learned last night, if our insurance video, it has to be in your insurance, yes. um, we, if it's anything like the NPCA, it's listed as Westerville City Schools, so we don't need to change anything. Okay. So that's a fun little tidbit. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I will be asking for the planning and zoning meetings to be there as well, um, because regardless of where we go, we're going to assume that this is still going to be the best bet for them. Sure. Yeah. Planning and for all of us. have to meet down in the amphitheater to keep the motivated and wanting exactly. to get it finished. Well, and that's what I was going to say about the September 29th date, is if it was nice, we could just be outside. So, I mean, I can be there. Be nice. Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat all that again later or next week or whatever, but that's the plan moving forward just so you guys know. We're planning on keeping our meetings local enough for all of the residents. So, um, because we have so many here. We don't want you to drive far. Um, next, we have Council President Wolf for Finance. Uh, finance committee has not had a meeting since uh, since our last report uh, as we heard this evening our next meeting will be probably sometime mid-september where we'll begin to work on the 2023 uh, budget perfect and then just email us all and let us yep. know that yep. works well, and i will just say we'll you know. they have been busy they have been busy doing quite a few things and so they're, they're in here and they're busy so that's a good thing um Streets is council person costs. Um, we already heard from Mike again. I'm hoping that I can get with her and do something with the 17th date to make that an actual streets meeting to get a couple things done. So you guys have received the leaf bids. Um, you guys will receive the information for flow line. Um, again, we just got it today, so I'll make sure you guys see that, but hopefully we will have the legislation in front of you to move forward on those two projects, but I don't want to do it until I have the blessing from the streets committee. I don't want to step on toes. We can probably take a minute and a half to review the two bids. That's entirely now. up to you guys. Do we have an appetite? I mean, there's two bids. I don't. Well, I mean, we're 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 cocking along. Right. I think we can do two bids. I mean, they're pretty. I, yeah. I saw that they were pretty close. I think yeah. it comes down uh, to what do we know about these companies? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I'll speak to that while he's pulling it up. Yeah. Um, we have used both companies in the past. One is. Uh, let me rephrase that. It's the family's company, so it's a different it's name. It's good. essentially good. the same, and maybe I shouldn't say that it is, but I believe it is the same company, different owner. Son is now son in law. Son in law is now doing it. The other one is um, Brown Master. That is the company that we use quite a bit for cutting our trees. They are the ones that did it last year. Um, so, and that's so number one was the son in law of the guy we've used previously, but not last year. They came in at 28 grand, paid over three installments at the end of each month over the term of the contract. The other one, Groundmaster. Okay, wait. Used, yeah. On this one, is there a specific date that they want to do it, or does it say uh, anything about see. anything like that? One of them said on a one day a week and they're open. Yeah, we proposed 28 to be paid, made in da da da. Uh, no, this does not have. Okay. So I'll read the whole thing. This is a proposition for the curbside leaf removal contract for Minerva Park for the year 2022. The contract will begin October 16th, conclude December 16th. We have the equipment necessary to complete the work efficiently. We'll be operating a box dump truck with a commercial grade leaf vacuum machine. Workers will wear uh, neon safety vests and perform duties with utmost care to the homeowner's property and to the village of Minerva Park. And the rest is, uh, is money and insurance information. They know the layout and mapping very well and we have contacts contracts with very happy customers who live in Minerva Park in Minerva Park as well. And Groundmasters who did it last year, uh, the same time frame, 
but they say Wednesday or another day per by the bill. Yeah, so they theirs is specifically um, every Wednesday or another day preferred by the village weather permitting uh, and in the event of inclement weather the leaf pickup and disposal will be done the following day again weather permitting uh, and then another cleanup round at the end and they are uh, they came in at 31.5 so three and a half thousand more I don't see a whole lot of difference between them. I think they are both known, known commodities. Um, I would suggest we move to on the less expensive of the two. Does anybody have strong opinion one way or the other? I don't, I don't necessarily see enough reason not to just go with the cheaper one. The cheaper one is, I don't know, maybe you said it and I just missed it. Is there something in there like the other one where pickup day is on the no, system? They're not, they're not giving us a, a I would guarantee. Like that I, I would like that added. I mean, I don't see why that would be a big deal. Again, so, because that was an issue prior with residents that we've had. So the, go out every day. So, yeah. so the upside is that they, in the past, because we've, again, we've used that company before, so and in the past, on a nice day, they'll come out. So instead of, oh, it's raining this Wednesday, it's raining this Thursday, now we're going to wait until the next Wednesday when it rains, and it rains the next Thursday, and so it might be three weeks, right? So it's, we should add that in there. So, I mean, I think we can we can ask, but I don't I don't know that that is how they want to work it. So I think we we were looking on their face. If you feel strongly enough that a call day is that important, I do. Then I do with some of the issues that we've had. Not that we've had a lot, but we have in past in the last few years we have. So if well, so hold on. So we, we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're apples and oranges here because we've only Let's had- Let's get them out. Mm -hmm. Let's get them out. Yeah, because we've, we've only had a service with a, uh, a dedicated day once. So it's not an issue. So to say that we've had issues with a dedicated day over the past few years can't be accurate because we've only had that as part of the contract once. So let's just clarify that. Then last year, we had one whole week, if not two weeks where we was not picked up and right. prior to that i remember prior the previous council having to ask for certain things like this i think it's just keeping it safe i don't think it's that big of a deal if I, I think the point being maybe made i'm not the, understanding no, the point being made is when you have a dedicated day if that day gets washed out then it gets pushed back a week if you just have we'll do it on what day we can come in they're not a dedicated day and they're not saying well we show up on wednesdays and wednesday was raining so we can't do it we'll see you next week right. they say wednesday was raining friday was nice we haven't been out here yet this week we have to get out on friday but how does that give our residents time to plan according that that's well that's, that's the thing yeah, so I mean, this is for our residents so it's, right? it's a it's but it's a, a right so but it's a it, it i would have to go back and find the best statistical model to to model it out for you but if you only have one day, right, then you have one bite at the apple for, for leaves to get picked up, right? If it could be the best day of seven, right, then they will come more often. We, we should expect more trips and have more leaves picked up more regularly. In the past, have we ever had a leaf removal place that did this and did not have a specific day listed yes. and they came and picked up five days every, a week? Not every five days a week. Except for last year. But, but, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, they, 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 they have come in last year. They have come multiple days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have come multiple yeah. days in the past. Ah, oh, okay. Right? And it's right. based on what, what they can do when they can do it and the weather. But right? can we have at least like the bare minimum that they have to at least come I mean that's protecting it, right? I, I don't I don't see any protection. Because I mean, if we could, the weather's we bad, could, the weather's bad. We right? I would say that it's reasonable to say, yeah, if they're not picking up leaves, we're not paying them. That's why we only pay them once a month over the three months. But you know, I would say that maybe it's reasonable to say that they need to guarantee us uh, service one day a week. That's it. Whatever day it may be. Yeah. But that. on the other hand, if it rains all week, they can't run their machines, and now we've put them in a position where they're in breach of contract. And, and, 
And my question would be, how are you alerting residents to know? Is it just have it out there and if you see them come through? I, I, I don't expect, I don't expect anybody day. to rake their leaves based on this schedule. I expect people to rake their leaves on their schedule and they will get picked up when they get picked up. I don't think that a lot of people are. I, I think that's how it's been. Mistaken. That's how it's been it's every year except last year, and largely it is. I can tell you, it's always been better than bad. I, I, I can't see both. Right. Oh, well, that's a fact. It's always I been better than bad them, mm -hmm. and last year, while I had no issue with the service, right? I think that my preference is the other way around to have the service come. Uh, when it is pre when the weather is preferential and it and it works. Because so most people are just going to break on a weekend and then yeah. so when it comes, it comes. To, 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 you're, you know, Tuesday night after work, you're not going to walk out there and rake leaves just because tomorrow is Wednesday. You're going to do it on Sunday and know that you have leaves sitting out there till Wednesday. Right. Right. So in the past, like the easy answers are, I I will say this: I had residents that loved it on the Wednesday pickup, and I had residents that hated it. And I was actually trying to pull up a couple emails just to read a couple of them to see you, because nobody's wrong. Um, you have two thousand residents ish. Maybe I should start getting the real number. Um, I will tell you, some hated the Wednesday pickup, and some absolutely loved it. It's like our trash. We put it out. We know it's getting picked up. Right. Um, I will say in the past, you know, again, this is the. Son, or I, I won't speak for this particular company, but yes, there were times in which he would come through multiple times in one week. Um, but there were also times his truck broke down, and there would be seven to ten days. I mean that, but that, in my opinion, in my opinion, that could be the case with any company. That if your truck breaks, they don't have five trucks. I, I seem to recall we used the other one last year because we weren't sure of the new one. We wanted to give a chance and because the one we used last year came in with the lower bid. Yes. This year they came mm -hmm. in with the higher bid. Yeah. I don't think you can go wrong in either direction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah do, we, do you have any, I don't know, back the napkin map from last year, do you know if you got about, was the bill more uh -huh. in favor of one day, less in favor of one day? No, I would say, and honestly, there's Facebook posts. I mean, just like yeah. usual, yes. there was a couple. Well, we can't use that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that data is not accessible. Yeah, so. I mean, it's it's people like it, people don't, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so I would again put forward that we move ahead with Buckeye Lawn Barbers. Okay, well, we're going to have legislation here shortly. I don't know if you want yeah. to do anything yeah. with that or just so announce our, that. Uh, everybody's good with uh, amending it for the second reading to include Buckeye Lawn, lawn yes. Barbers not to exceed uh, 28,000, I believe was their number? 28,000, so. Would, would there be any way to add a, you know, a clause, you know, to, I don't know, not, not to put in a breach of contract, but is there any legal phrasing to encourage a, a, a minimum or a expectation yeah, of a high So not, not tonight, okay. right, yeah, because yeah. that's a negotiation with the, with the vendor, mm -hmm. right? Some would say that there is an ethical concern with then turning around and engaging in additional negotiations after a bid process, right, because we basically put out a call saying, Give us your best offer we'll take it or leave it and then to turn around and say we mostly like your offer can you sweeten a little is there there could be okay. ethical concerns in i see i see what you you did it last year the same thing you negotiated the contract and people people had concerns with it right so i'm merely stating that as a potential concern yeah i don't want to go diving in any kind of technical. yeah yeah so yeah. I, I think what we have in front of us are two Clear and concise offers. Uh, the way the way maybe we could boil it down is that one company feels it's worth thirty five hundred dollars more to have a called day, and the other one because it allows them more freedom in their schedule, it's potentially less expensive, right? And I I am suggesting we move forward with the less expensive option. Not hearing great pushback. Regarding legislation, when I read it, I'll move to amend. And if anyone doesn't want to amend, they can debate then. And yeah. Vote it down. Right. So that is the process. We can move on. Streets right. is streeted. Okay, we're yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're Street moving struck. On. Okay. Oh goodness. All right, let's go to community council person camera. <laughs> Why don't you say that? Because it's you... the pool. Yeah. Do you, you want to bring that up now? I love no, all of it. Yeah. All of it. All of it. Yeah. Uh, splish splash. So um, um, 
I have nothing really new since the other day. However, um, we have been asked by some residents if we could potentially have adult time at the pool during the day. Since starting Monday, we only have the pool open from 4 to 8. And I reached out to Jesse um, and did get Jesse's response back, and he said, absolutely not, not without a lifeguard. So just so, just again, I, we okay. wanted to put that on for public record because we've had numerous people So there were out. people saying, can we just have adults and have a no lifeguard on duty sign? A, sign a waiver. 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 Sign something like that. Um, but, you know, it just becomes more of a concern with, you know, um, not having a lifeguard there. So, liability. yeah, I mean, just a liability. So um, the answer is no at this point in time. Um, unless we can find a lifeguard that wants to lifeguard during those hours. Um, that is definitely going to be a big discussion, I think, for next year, what we could do to potentially make some things like that happen pre-planning. Um, it's a question that I have been asked every, uh, is this my third year? Yeah, I've been asked every single year the exact same question. And, and even if you did have, I mean, you'd still have to have staff there. Because you can't, you can't right. be like, oh, you're adults, we trust you to just right. Right. walk into right. this unsupervised pool or that you're and do whatever you right. want. Right. Or if you haven't paid, I mean, then we would still need to collect money and do all yeah. of that. So there is some logistics to it. I think it's a great conversation to have. Add it to your list of pool 2023 and see how we can potentially make something like that happen. We've even talked about an end of year pass that is mm -hmm. in, um, you know, an adult pass that is outside of because. Right. We, we've talked about a lot of things. Okay. We'll see. Yep. Okay, Interesting. Okay. All right. That was all I have. Yeah. What else do I have? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions for, for council person, camera? No, but great job this year. Yeah. You, have worked, you and James have worked extremely hard. The concessions has went amazing. The doors look great. Okay. Just a good job. Yeah, it, I, I've enjoyed the pool this year. Um, are we doing? Oh, yeah. Um, Sunday, what is that, the 4th? Sunday the 4th. The 4th, we will be doing only hot dogs <laughs> at the pool that day. <laughs> we do have some hot dogs. I think left that, over. that's September 4th, right? Yes. Yeah. September 4th. Oh, last Friday, the last Sunday of the pool. We can do season. three, noon to two, noon to four. Um, we've done one to three. Oh, yeah. I'd say one to three. Oh yeah. Let's okay. just do one to three. One to three PM. So, we will put some ads out on there. Yes. Um, Until yes. supplies are now. And that's why we're only doing hot dogs. Yes. As we are talking about the pool, I'm gonna skip council person Tresta and go to council person Wolf. When is the last wine and cheese? Oh, August twentieth. August 20th. I knew you would know. I just skipped there because I knew Danny was making the snack, so I know he would know. Sip and dip. Yeah. Yeah. Sip and dip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be there or don't. Uh. Well, that's <laughs> <my favorite. laughs> I Let's move on. Thing. Okay. <laughs> you and I may be at somebody. Okay. Um, let's move to safety. Council person McNamara. Hello, everyone. Um, Safety's not met since our last meeting, but I would like to get a meeting together. Um, I have received a couple emails about um, different signage in the village and how it can improve, especially as it refers to the area around the school. Um, I was thinking that it could kind of be bundled together with, you know, the, the address kind of project. Um, I don't know if that'd be best in safety or best in maybe streets or best as a work session topic, but I think it's definitely, you know, enough to be discussed there that I'd like to get on the agenda as soon as possible. What, what are you talking about signage? So Absolutely. we received some um, we received some emails um, about signage around you know the schools like you know you know slow down children right. play or you know maybe down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also I don't know if you were party to this, but there was um, a observation that some of the addresses are pretty difficult to see in the, uh, how do you say, original or older parts of the village. Um, and we have a couple of uh, proposals um, about how to make the addresses more visible. I'd like to dive deeper into and discuss with the council at large. So I don't know if that'd be safety or streets or a work session topic, but 
Probably those two bear, um, you know, should be visited. And while we're speaking about that, just something I noticed because I live over by the new school. Mm -hmm. I did see uh, a bus already going to exit, a car exit over there. Mm -hmm. um, there's not really clear signage that says this is exit only. The but school, yeah, the school. I know they're out there practicing, so the school is the school's job to make sure that the drivers follow the loop properly. Yeah. So I know we're, we'll, we'll let them make them aware when we get complaints like that. Yeah, because so they can get on them. That's totally an exit on that. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the way down in far view. I know. Yeah. So how was that the first? I I mean, left the neighborhood right before school. The buses came in. So <laughs> I mean, I didn't have any um, emails today. Yeah. So I was. That's, I mean, that's a win. I did see, I did see Monica on the corner with her <laughs> sign. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay. so hopefully, she can keep them all in line, and then I don't get any emails. So right. awesome. Okay. Um, Either one, I mean, as far as streets or safety goes, I think it's something that I know would help. That yeah. Causes. yeah, I know we've got a couple things going on there, and I know that it would help the police department out. I'll fight everybody every time. Okay, so get with Chief on dates and things on that, and then just kind of email everybody. Um, Councilperson Brugger, legislation. Okay, well, uh, oh, oh, no, your, your committee report. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we haven't had a meeting since our last thing. Um, we have not a meeting scheduled yet. I was looking at the thing and I went to forgot the email bar. Um, so if we follow pattern, it would be the 25th yeah. at 6 or 6.30. Um, is there any appetite to make it the 18th so <coughs> council that night anyway? What, what, what date would that be? Oh, move it instead of the last week? week? Yeah. yeah, move it to the 18th. I think that might be better in case that meeting goes a little longer on the 25th. Mm -hmm. We'll already be, I mean... I would love going. to have it 6.30 on the 18th. So far, and I know 6.30 doesn't give us a lot of time, um, but so far the only thing that has been brought to my attention by any members or that I have on the agenda so far is looking at uh, leash things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for those curious, Monroe Park does have a leash uh, yeah. code, but the code currently says the dog must be on a leash or under reasonable control of the owner. Uh, what we are looking at, and we'll be looking at that night debating amongst ourselves, is should we change that to just no nope, leash, period, there's no such thing as reasonable control. <coughs> uh, that's the debate. I'm not going to even say whether side I weigh in on, on this one right now, but that is the debate we'll be having at that meeting then. Perfect. Okay, mayor's report is okay. Does anybody have any questions, or does anybody have anything for legislation additional that they want to talk about on the 18th to make that meeting even longer? So, yeah, talk now before we schedule it at okay. 6 30 and have to be like, oh, it's yeah. seven o'clock, we're done. Perfect. Okay, so or just send me an email if you have something else you want to put in. As always, more than happy to drop anything on the agenda. Um, I will make sure that we advise Barb to adjust that to 6.30 on the 18th and remove it from the 25th. Okay. So we will get that done and we will get that updated and put in all different places. Um, so if anybody could actually get their meeting scheduled like in the next 24 hours, that way she only has to do it once because she has to go to the pool and all these different places every time we do it. So um, if we could just get a couple of them done at the same time, great. If not, it is what it is. Um, my mayor's report, I think I've talked enough. I think I've told you guys enough five times. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with, we've been working on a lot with the building and we're super excited to, to get moving forward on a lot of the TIF projects and the amphitheaters moving along. Everything's been moving along and I feel like I've been in here for five straight days and it's, it's actually exciting. So getting some of these things done. And Jason, I'm loving the pool this year. So there you go. Next, citizen comments. Tony Benedetti, 2937 Maryland Court. And I want to talk about the community building remodel. Uh, you know, it appears to me this is going to be another case of you guys passing something by emergency without ever even notifying the residents of the village that you're get that this is happening. Uh, you know, it, it just went out to bid, and I think it was, you know, a couple weeks, you know, gave the, the, the last bidder enough time to turn in another bid, you know, so, it, it, you know, what I would say about this building and what you guys need to understand is that council wasn't involved in the plan of this. 
the planning was, the, and how they came up with the, the floor plan was done by the chief, Eric, and the mayor, and Lee. The only involvement council had was we made some, brought up some concerns about uh, bathrooms, and the big one was why the community room is on this side of the building and not over here, because that was a priority for the, the facilities committee and everyone else working on the building, was that the community room on this side of the building. To this day, I have never heard the response about why it's going to cost more money, other than they said there's going to be more excavating. They didn't explain why it would cost more money to move the community room on this side of the building. Now, I would describe, this, and as it's to, you know, described now, that this is going to be a municipal building. It's going to be a great municipal building police office. It is practically no improvement to the community room. If you look at it, it's about the same size that we have right here. You know, maybe a little bit bigger. You know, but you go down to the to the, the police department. Now they've got three workstations for possibly maybe one police officer might be here needing a workstation because the chief's got an office, the lieutenant's got an office. They've got a, a room for uh, processing people to get arrested, which I don't think they need. The, when I brought this up to the chief. He said, well, we don't process anybody here because they get taken down to Franklin County. That's where they get processed. We would typically use this for when someone has a drunk driving charge and we're going to bring them back to the community building so someone can come pick them up instead of towing their car and taking them to jail. That was the, re the only reason that the chief gave me for having a, 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 a processing room. You know, their store, you know, they added on storage onto the new, for the police, for evidence room, but the, the basement isn't used for anything. The room that the police are working out of today, and have been for years, and has gotten along, you know, made it work for years, isn't being used for anything. In, in the, the, the police have got two locker rooms, a men's and women's, with 15 lockers for the men, five for the women. That's 20 lockers for a police department that maybe has nine or ten officers, you know, on staff. I don't anticipate that, that we are going to start spending a bunch of money and having 20 officers here. You know, so the whole plan, the way I would describe it, is in a perfect world, it'd be nice to have all these facilities for the police department. But in this environment with the cop, this is already, uh, you know, 50% more than the original uh, proposal it was supposed to be a two million dollar project. Now it's a three million dollar project. And also, one of the priorities of the, the facilities committee was to do a plan that kept this building open during the construction. Now we've got to move out of here, and you guys don't even know exactly how you're going to accomplish that. Maybe we'll have our meetings at the school. Where are we going to? Where are the police operating out of? Well, you know, where are we putting everything? So you know. You guys need to slow down a minute. It's gone this long. It doesn't need to be passed by an emergency. So you could be tearing the building down by the end of the month. You know, we could do other, there are other ways to go about accomplishing, improving this building without spending $3 million. And we don't even know how much it's gonna to cost to move us out. How, and then it goes on longer than expected. Then there's more rent. You know, so there's a lot of things that need to be discussed amongst this group of people because you guys haven't had a discussion in any detail about this building at all because you guys really don't want, apparently don't want to take the time. I don't want to put, you know, words or anything in anybody's mouth, but, you know, the residents of this village that I've talked to, I would say half of them, and I'm not exaggerating, don't think we need to do anything here. They say, well, they're doing just fine. What's, what's, what do they need? And in reality, the only thing that we need here is to make the building ADA compliant, to have a couple more bathrooms or bigger bathrooms that are ADA compliant, and a place for the police officers. You know, one, a locker room is Thank typically... Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, sick of this five minutes. Thank you for your Thank comments. You. Um, I'm actually, there is, I'm, I'm not going to no. go anywhere. So let's move to legislation. Okay. Let's start with ordinance 2022-19, an ordinance to amend the codified ordinances of the village of Minerva Park to include section 618, 
0.19 cleanup of animal defecation. Uh, this is the third reading. We've talked about this before. This makes it a class, what is it, four, the, the smallest class misdemeanor to uh, leave your dog waste on the ground more than three times in a 12 month session. It would go up to one step higher. I can't remember all the levels of misdemeanor. Um, this is our third reading. I move for passage. Second. Second is under the counter. On the wall. Oh, he's on it. All right. Any debate? Anybody? All right. Go ahead, Madam Mayor. Councilperson Trusta. Yes. <laughs> Councilperson Camera. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. <laughs> okay, next we have ordinance 21, 20, sorry, ooh, that's written wrong, uh, 2022-21, not 2022, an ordinance accepting a certain bid from Weaver Commercial Construction Inc. for remodeling and construction of the Minerva Park Municipal Building and declaring an emergency. Um, we are not waiting readings on this, however. So it is still just the first reading. It looks like the not succeed amount is 3,153,000. That is for the renovation and, boy, it's more than a renovation. It's an adding on of the existing community building. And that has been read. All right, resolution 2022XX, and maybe we can get the XX out of there for next time, obviously. Okay, why don't you say XX? Is that the leaf? Yeah, the leaf. This says 2022 20. Oh, mine had XX on it. So let me amend that on my page. Um, a resolution authorizing a contract with blank for leaf pickup. I'm going to first uh, make a motion to amend this to in that first blank, put in Buckeye Lawn Barber, and also add that in the first blank of section one, as they being our preferred company, and at section two, at a cost is 28,000. Yeah, I actually, I don't think we need an amendment. We don't need a motion to amend. <clears throat> we can just state that at this point, because we are adding that to it for the second read. Third. The, is this the third? No, second. second. Yeah, so, so we added second. it for the second. It'll gotcha. be there for the third. There's no need to make them up. All right, so I'm going to add those. So now it reads a resolution authorizing a contract with Buckeye Lawn Barber for lease pickup. And as I just mentioned, the cost would be 28000 That is our standard lease pickup. They'll be here from mid-October to mid-December. Uh, essentially, just like every year, this is a company that we have kind of worked in the past. Although, as we mentioned earlier in our debate, it is actually owned by the son-in-law, the former owner, but we're hoping it's essentially run the same. Okay, moving on. Resolution 2022-22. A res uh, excuse me, a resolution, I can't say it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and fiscal officer to enter into contract with Jacobs Engineering, CM2H Hill, for the 2022 Lake Master Plan proposal and declaring it an emergency. This is just a second reading. The cost of that is 75,000, or not to exceed 75,000, I should say, sorry. And that is to get a detailed engineer's report of what needs to done to the lake and various levels of if you just want them to be a little better, if you want them to actually support life, et cetera. Is that correct, uh, Mike? Yes. And can you clarify the resolution number for that one more time? I apologize. The resolution number for that is 2022-22. No. Yeah, we no. all have 21. I think 2022. Right, I'm just reading about the papers that were given me. So but now that I look at well, the, well, you need now that I look at the agenda, it is 2022-21. No, but it's probably it's correct right on, on the, the on the thing that you're reading. Right. So oh, that's okay. why I wanted to make sure that the agenda is incorrect, not yeah. the okay. Okay. agenda is incorrect. And again, I and am we'll right. We'll do that third reading on the 18th, right? On the yeah. We will be adjusting that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, this one. Woohoo! The fun one. 
<laughs> not a messy thing one. <laughs> Resolution 2022, and I'm gonna say 23? Yes, that's what we have. Okay, good, I have that XX on my calendar count again. Um, a resolution to amend the rules of council and calendar as was approved in resolution 2022-01 and declare an emergency with a request to waive the second two readings or the yeah the second and third reading and this would change our work sections that are normally saturday mornings to thursday evenings and also the second and also september dates yeah it also amends the september dates. oh it amends the september dates that were already posted yes um for anyone listening we just all decided we'd rather just apparently work every Thursday night of the week rather than have to get up at 7 o'clock on a Saturday. There you go. Uh, I'm going to move to waive the second and third reading. Second. Moved and seconded. Any debate? <coughs> go ahead. Council President Wolf? Aye. Council Person Tresla? Aye. Council Person Cameron? Aye. Council Person McNamara? Aye. Council Person Berger? Aye. I will now move uh, passage as an emergency. Second. Second. Mr. Cameron, the right honorable. Okay. Still no discussion? Okay. No, I think we're ready. Councilperson Berger? Aye. Councilperson McNamara? Yes. Councilperson Camera? Aye. <laughs> Councilperson Tresta? Aye. What's Council President Wolf? Aye. <laughs> At least you guys are making it fun tonight. <laughs> I call it fun. <coughs> Another person okay. has six cents of fun. I have a six cents of fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. Okay. That's all legislation. Do you have anything else? Okay. Old business. Does anybody have anything they would like to talk about as far as before? Just real quick. Uh, I know that we're doing the leash law and legislation, this and that. However, I did speak with Denise at Hawthorne today. She would like if we advise our citizens to not have unleashed dogs in that backyard. There is students out there, and also it's soon going to be turned into a football field. So we need to put something out to advise them that there's to be no off-leash dogs at Hawthorne. So, so, they, so if I may, they need to put out, maybe we should talk to the school district. We'll actually have a meeting tomorrow with the school district members. Yeah, around. I spoke with Denise. We, so. will, we will need to put, they'll need to put signs to enforce it, because if, if they're doing it, we can't. We can't tell them not to on the private property of the school. They've got to be able to post signs. That would be appropriate. Right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So if you guys talk to them, if you can bring that we up, will. that'd be great. We'll yep. Yeah. Um, any more old business? I always think I have old business oh, yeah. and I forget. Mm -hmm. I didn't write it down. So I think I'm good. Anybody with any new business? It's just been a long day. That's what right. I feel so like. So for, for new business, I, as council president on behalf of the village, would like to extend a fine congratulations to our mayor on her uh, recent nuptials. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We still, are we still going to work? Yeah, yeah, we're still in business. business. Unless you wanted to talk about nope. some more. Hey, I, um, because I know we're going to spend our next session continuing to debate about the leash law, I was looking at some stuff today, and I noticed about, um, we have in that section, a uh, about don't feeding the geek, don't feed the geese. And um, just wondering if we should put some signs up uh, around some of the other ponds that sure. say that, yes. and that's, that's a violation of our code. Because me. And, and I know anybody, people that have done it. And if anybody, and saw, saw, the yeah. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> saw the recent social media post, uh, when I think Connor posted it about the goose with the wing that sticks to the side. Oh, yeah. That is called angel wing. That is most likely done because someone has fed her bread. So, and again, just like when I met with um, Scram uh, about the peace situation not too long ago, he said that He's here. They they were born here. I mean, they imprint. They stay here. So again, it's he's got it here somewhere. So again, I think that's an awesome idea. Perfect. It's just a good reminder. Mm -hmm. We can get some of those signs ordered. That is not an issue whatsoever. So um, I'll work with Barb on getting a few extra ones ordered and some poles and all that as well. Um, 
old business, new business. I did reach out to Aqueduct. I am expecting some estimates for fountains, aerators, not all, but fountains and or aerators. Um, the, and, uh, and and the three and, small ones yes. that are just yes. yes and just the treatment for 2023. So mm -hmm. once we get the estimates back, you guys will have the options of some fountains won't work because there's certain depth needs to be. You get the point. Yeah. So they will give me all the options. I will present them all to you guys, and you guys can decide if you want to do anything in this one or what. What you get the point. Yeah. But we should have this in the next couple days. That's all I have. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. So do you have a sign say only two minutes and please point the bread? <laughs> no. Because they're protected. No. Well, I would love that. You know. If you guys have so much more patience than I do. <laughs> all I can say. I it was, was crazy. Because it's not like it hasn't been discussed. Everything. I, I, I need more for the. I know. I need. I, I, I need. I need. I need. I need.